in a few moments, we'll have what I hope is not a historic vote. It shouldn't be a historic vote. It ought to be a boring vote. The vote is to proceed to the National Defense Authorization Act for 2022, just as we've done for 60 years running. But I understand that there's a movement afoot to derail it because there haven't been enough amendments. I didn't get my amendment in, therefore I'm going to block this bill. Well, let's talk a little bit about the history of the bill. I serve on the Armed Services Committee, as does the chair. And both of us can attest that the Armed Services Committee is one of the most nonpartisan committees in the United States Senate. And in fact, in the arms, let's talk about amendments for a minute. In the Armed Services Committee, during our markup, we adopted 145 amendments, most by agreement, by bipartisan agreement, by unanimous consent. There were a few roll call votes, but not very many. And in my experience in nine years on that committee, there had only been a handful of party line roll call votes in the Armed Services Committee. It produces some very odd bedfellows and some combinations that don't make much sense politically, but it's because the members of the committee put the interests of the United States of America first and make their decisions on that, not on politics. So 145 amendments in the committee. Then there's a manager's package that we're going to be voting on today that has 57 amendments in it, 27 supported by Republicans, 27 by Democrats and three that are entirely bipartisan. So we're up to 202 amendments. That's a lot of amendments to a piece of legislation. Not to mention the fact that the manager's package within the committee was developed largely by consensus between the two parties' leaders, Chairman Reed, Ranking Member Inhofe. So this process is replete with amendments and compromise, and that's how it's been done for the past 60 years. Now, last week, before we left, we had another 18 amendments that were agreed upon by both parties to bring up as a package, not as a package, I'm sorry, to be considered one at a time and be voted on. That process was killed by a, a group of senators who said, no, I want my amendment, I'm not on the list, and therefore I'm going to object to the, uh, the unanimous consent request so nobody gets their amendments. So today we're going to be voting on the motion to proceed to the substitute amendment that's chock full of bipartisan amendments. It doesn't have all the amendments everybody wants. It doesn't have a couple of amendments that I feel are very important. But you know what? To quote my favorite philosopher, Mick Jagger, you don't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. And that's what we've got right here is what we need. This is the defense of the United States of America. And why can't we do just one bill without politics and without stamping our feet and saying, I didn't get my amendment, so I'm going to vote against it. And by the way, this is a vote on a motion to proceed, which in my view ought to be just the most routine possible vote. It's not a vote on the bill itself. Let's proceed to this bill. Let's proceed to the, to the bipartisan manager's package that's been worked out painstakingly over the last several months. And let's think about what this bill is all about. This isn't ordinary policy. This is the national security of this country. This is a pay raise for our troops. This is national security that our people depend upon. That's our most fundamental responsibility. It's the preamble of the Constitution, one of the key responsibilities to, pro to provide for the common defense. That's why you have governments in the first place. We've, been doing, we've done it for 60 years in a row. I urge my colleagues, this isn't a moment for partisanship or for playing about, you know, I didn't get my amendment, so I'm not going to vote for it. You know, suck it up. I'm going to vote for it. I, as I say, there are a couple of amendments that I felt very passionately about involving cyber and the protection of the country, but they're not going to, they, they aren't in, but I'm still going to vote for it because that's our responsibility. This is the most fundamental responsibility we have around here. 
and we have a bipartisan process. It came out of committee 25 to 3. Two Republicans, one Democrat voted against it. That's as close to unanimity as you can get on an important piece of policy legislation. So I urge my colleagues to vote yes on the motion to proceed and then to move the bill later this week, to meet our responsibility to the American people, to meet the responsibility that every Congress has met for the last 60 years. If we don't do that because we're angry that we didn't get something in or there weren't enough amendments, 202 amendments built on top of already a bipartisan package that was produced as a chairman's mark in the committee, to me is pretty full consideration. And I hope my colleagues will vote yes to proceed to this bill. It's our responsibility, and more than that, it's what's necessary to protect this country. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield the floor.